What's going on, everybody? Thursday. Right, guys what's going on if you haven't yet please hit the like button get your ass in the chat start asking some questions what's going on sam what's going on yim <clears throat> if you have any questions about gear tone playing leads whatever ask me and i'll answer it what's going on christoph questions about anything just fucking ask me questions Hope everybody's doing well today. Hope everybody has a good... How's my Thursday so far? Um, I wish I would have gotten a little bit more sleep, honestly. I had, uh, had to wake up a little early um, because uh, the EPB had to come and replace my router. Otherwise, this wouldn't have been able to happen, so they had to come early, so I had to, had to get my ass up because my wife was recording a podcast. Um... Is my Fred guitar stock mostly? So it's got stock pickups. Um, it's got the stock pickups, which are actually pretty good. And then other than that, it's com it's just got like the brass. He just put the brass bells and whistles on it. Um, but other than that, it's I mean it's stock. It's got the stock wiring, the Japanese wiring, the Japanese pickups. But it's it's solid. Is the saying tone is in the fingers true? Mostly. <laughs> it's 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 your fingers and your your amp. Um for sure it's your fingers and your amp. Cause like Lot of it has to do with like the the ability to like put like a lot of jerry sound is like vibrato in your fingers you know what i mean he's like a lot of that is like him shaking uh yeah i mean like it you should be able to play well on almost anything like it, it really does come down to the player. You should be able to play on any shitty instrument and make it sound okay. 
Um, let's see. My wife does podcast. Uh, she doesn't do like she doesn't do comedy podcasts. She does like lifestyle podcasts. She does like health, health and spirituality kind of stuff. That's what she does. Um, you got a Qtron Plus, uh, and you're playing with a Strat. What can you do with it to get Jerry's tone? So always, if you're playing with an envelope filter and you're trying to do that Jerry sound, always go onto your your bridge pickup. Always try to be on that bridge pickup. Because that's how you get that that proper sound. Because if I were to change it and put it on the... If I were to change it and put it on like the middle pickup... It's got a different sound to it, right? and as far as like the settings on it go i don't know i don't i've never had a qtron plus i could tell you how to dial in a regular qtron and i could tell you how to dial in the the smoke and amp co micro v i could tell you how to dial in the mutron microtron 4 but I don't, I don't know. That one's got more knobs. I would say go and check out um, my buddy Gabriel Bergman. He's a good, uh, he's a good Grateful Dead guitar teacher here on YouTube, and he uses a Qtron Plus. And I believe on his Instagram a while back, he actually put his settings up. Um, let's see, Dave, what's up? Uh, all is well. I'm just a little tired today. Uh, ever use an octave down with or without the filter? Yeah, so a lot of the times, guys, and if you haven't yet, please hit the like button. A lot of the times when I'm using it, I like to use it for just kind of like, so this is what my, my octave tone kind of sounds like. That's what that regular octave tone sounds like. And then this is what it sounds like with the the Mutron. And this is for mainly, um, uh, this is mainly for like, feel like a stranger. So it'd be like. So I uh, I really enjoy it for that. And then there will be times where, like, uh, it, it really just depends. So, like, there is sometimes, uh, there's a setting on here that I like that will almost make me sound like steel drums. Uh, and I'll kind of do that for... Uh, what is that what is that line from terrapin i'm about to yeah so so in that that last part of terrapin that comes out next week there's that section in seven where it's like Ah, I don't know. Again, just waking up here. But I always liked that. John W., what's up? Uh, let's see. Settings for a regular Qtron. So, low pass, have it on LP, and then uh, depending on your guitar, so this changes, you'll have to dial it to taste, or depending on what you're using. Uh, I usually just went like 12 o'clock and 12 o'clock on uh, the other two knobs. Um, uh, yeah, I totally fucked up that part from Terrapin. Don't even pay attention to that. Um, let's see. Strat, you're playing on a Strat, so go again. 
bridge pickup. You want to be on this pickup, bridge pickup. Um, and you're going to want to, yeah, just kind of like see where you're at, putting it, putting them both at 12 o'clock. And if it's not peaking through enough, like up your drive a little bit. And then if it's doing too much, maybe back off on the queue a little bit. You'll have to like get it in there, um, get, get it in there to taste. It's like you, you salt and pepper to taste. Because everybody hears this shit differently. You know, everybody picks up on different things. Um, let's see. How long did it take me to become a good guitar player? I know it's subjective, but like when I felt super confident in my sound. Um, oh, man. Do I feel super confident in my sound? Not all the time. No. But um, I'm, o- I'm okay. And it took, you know, I've been playing guitar like seriously for like 15 years now, almost 15 years. Um, and a lot of that has been spent like on the street playing for money so I could survive. Like I was homeless for a long time and just busked. Uh, and a lot of that was like playing originals and playing dead tunes and stuff. So that's how I really cut my teeth on playing was like, I didn't get to go to school. Like I didn't get to go to school for it. I was homeless and poor. Like I didn't, I don't, I didn't get the, you know, I didn't have good enough grades, uh, to get into like Berkeley or go to a music school or anything like that. So I had to teach myself everything. Like I don't, I don't have that background of, uh, book, book learned. Um, although I am like decently intelligent, but I'm not the smartest cookie. I'm more, I'm more empathetic, you know what I mean? So that's why my playing is a lot more emotional. Now, as far as that goes, I think I'm a good emotional guitar player. I think I'm a good intuitive guitar player. I don't think that I am a good, um, I don't think I'm the best, like, technically skilled guitar player. Um, let's see. Thoughts on the song, Help on the Way. But, but that, okay, so, like, Im- imposter syndrome is a huge thing among any artist. Just just to go back to that real quick about uh, confidence and things like that. So, like, there are times, like, uh, y- you know, every, um, eh, like, every one of the live chillin' jams is different. You know, even though I'm playing, like, a lot of the same songs over again, it's just that, it's that same idea of every time you play it, you play it differently. I'm always trying to play stuff differently. I'm always trying to think of, like, new things to do or ways to change up what I'm doing. Um, but there are some times where it's, like, I definitely feel like a fucking imposter. I definitely feel like I shouldn't be here. It's, like, why Why am I here? Why am I doing this? Uh, but then again, you have to remember that there's nobody that can do stuff the way you can. Like, no matter how derivative you think you are, you're still an individual. And, like, as soon as something is filtered through your perception, it's yours. It's new. It's different. So, like, you have to be able to allow that because a lot of the times artists and and people like us, people like you and me, we can get down on ourselves really easily. Like, we are our harshest critics. Um, So sometimes you just got to loosen that butthole and chill out because you're doing fine. You're, like, you're on your path. Like, you have to trust that you're where you're at. And if you feel like you need to work harder, then work a little bit harder. But don't fucking overexert yourself. Um. Let's see here. Thoughts on the song Help on the Way. I love that song. I love Help on the Way and Slipknot. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a great song. Like, what do you mean my thoughts on it? Like, do I like it? I love it. I really enjoy it. It's fucking psycho. It's cocaine as a song. It's literally just cocaine as a song. Um, Let's see. Oh, and one of the best. uh, Paradise waits on the crest of a wave over angels in flames. What the fuck? That's just amazing songwriting. That's just amazing, like, poetry, you know? Um, Like I say, honey, it's you. Uh, let's see. Do I know the cage system? I know my version of the cage system, like following along with that's, that's why I, um, <clears throat> that's why I do the whole, uh, whole, whole half. And I do the chord inversions because that's basically caged. So if you know your, if you're doing an A here and you know, like you can get an A, a D, um, is it? Uh, 
but I just don't know. Like again, I'm not book learned. I don't I don't put time into. To me, it's more important for this to be a mistress. You know, music is a strange mistress, and I like to. You know, I like there to be a little bit of mystery, and I like when I figure something out to be like, oh shit, I've leveled up as a wizard. Um, but yeah, I probably should put some time into it. Um, uh, let's see. Do I sometimes play different backing tracks of the same song for different chillin' jams? Sometimes. Yeah, if there's like, if there's a different, but I've been doing it so long that like I know which ones are the good ones, uh, and I know which ones don't have like, cause, cause those backing tracks, man, as, as much of a beautiful, like, they're, they're amazing. It's amazing to have, we're in this day and age where you can literally look up most any Grateful Dead song and put backing track on it and you can find it, or really any song backing track and you can find it. Uh, but some of them aren't the best. Some of them have some some differences than the way I would do them or other people would do them. But that's just how that goes. Um, my name's Davey, not Toby. Toby's the other one. I'm Davey. Toby's the bearded guy. Um, let's see. Nobody can suck the way I do. That's right. Nobody can suck the way you do. <laughs> Uh, John W says, I think listening to someone who can bring out emotion on the guitar is a lot more fulfilling than technical accuracy. I, I agree. I would agree with you because that's what drew me. Oh no, you're, you're good. Jay left. You're fine. Um, let's see here. I think, I think that that's what drew me to Jerry in the first place, because a lot of the times it's like, it, you got to get that idea out of your head that Jerry's like the perfect guitar player. He fucked up all of the time. All of the time, there's missed notes and fucked up bends and like sh open string hits that shouldn't. Be. It's just he was fallible. We're all people. He wasn't a god. He was just a dude. Um, and so, like, that's also part of the reason why I like it so much is because there is so much room for error and growth and uh, the ability to actually like make something new and different. There's just, it's a sandbox, and it's really cool that like there are guitarists like jerry and trey and Jimi hendrix and uh let's see uh adrian Ballou, fucking frank zappa all those dudes were like playing in the sandbox they were showing you that it was okay to like break the rules a little bit and and i love that because i don't like rules i don't like being told what to do i don't like being told that the only way to play music is if you've gone to school for it you can go suck a dick because i make money <laughs> you know um not to say you don't need to learn stuff not to say I haven't learned stuff, but like I have to, uh, again, I'm, <laughs> I'm mentally ill. So like going to school was never a thing for me and like sitting down and like making myself learn charts and stuff like that. I can't do it. I have to play. I have to figure it out. I, I'm a trial by fire kind of guy. I have to learn things the hard way. Um, let's see. Uh, Gummo says, if Jerry didn't exist, do you think your playing would be insanely different? This is something interesting. I don't it would be it would be slightly different for sure. Um the uh the the there would be some differences, but uh, just just to let you guys in on a little bit. So my dad uh before he passed away, my dad was always an older fella, right? My dad was in his mid 40s when I was born. Um so he he always listened to a lot of old style music. So I always listened to a lot of like R and B, Motown, soul, doo wop, all of the stuff that Jerry was listening to. So I naturally have an inkling to play like that, like gospel and and all that stuff. Like all of that stuff is already in me. That stuff was already in me from childhood. So I still would have had a form of that. Now, I don't know, again, like there's no way to tell, but I, I feel like I naturally am drawn to that stuff because I can hear it. You know what I mean? Because I grew up with the same kind of music that he was listening to. So there, that was very easy for me to access, right? Um, so I thought, I always thought that that was, that was a really interesting question. Uh, but it, of course it would be different because there would be uh, like little idiosyncrasies. I don't know if I said that word right. There would be there would be little things in there that would change, and and of course there would be little things in there that wouldn't be there. Um, but yeah. Uh, let's see. Im says I've been playing one year, roughly three hours a day. I feel like I'm breaking down walls every day, but good guitar players still seem so far away. 
But, but again, you've only been playing for a year. That's one year. Like uh, some people have a natural aptitude for it, don't have to work as hard for it. It comes naturally to them, comes naturally to their ears and to their fingers. Sometimes that happens, and and those people are blessed and fuck them and all that jazz. <laughs> Uh, but again, like I've been playing for about 15 years, like full time, like all the time playing on the street, playing all of it. And I'm still not, I'm not that good. I'm okay. I'm not great. I'm fine. Uh, I, again, it's just, I can, I can convey emotion. That's all I have. I'm all style, no substance. (laughs) So, so really like I would, I would say at this point, you know, try to try to give more in like training your ear, training your fingers, just trying to trying to figure that stuff out about like where you lie within your spectrum. Because like I don't I'm not one of those players that's trying to sound just like Jerry in the way I play. You know, I fight against that. I don't want anybody to do that. You shouldn't do that. You know, take stuff that you like from every guitarist that you like. You know what I mean? It's just like my the way I play just fits over the Grateful Dead music really well. But also the style that I play can fit over any genre of music. I can play to anything, which is the beautiful thing about like the Grateful Dead's music since it spans so many genres. It it allows you to play over almost any style of music. Um let's see. Uh, Margo says, "Thanks for the time you spend with us. The dreads are really stretching out." Yeah. I mean, I've had my dreads for like 13 years. I recently cut like 2 feet off of them. Maybe like six months ago, something like that. Well, Wally, thank you. Erkin, what's up? Um, let's see. Erkin says, been playing guitar for 17 years. Still not good <laughs> at all. Bullshit. Uh, just started playing bass, and I think you finally found your thing. Okay, so maybe the... Okay, so bass is kind of where you're at. You can still rip, you can still rip dick on. Hey guys, sorry. Something something happened with OBS and it, it fucked up. But we're back now. And we're back. Um, so uh back to the Bobby thing. Yeah, so Bobby is just like the king of chord inversions. He plays guitar like a piano player. Um, so like a lot of his stuff is like up here. So if he was doing so like for his part on like um Franklin's Tower, that's A. Bobby really liked to kind of like stay around the same way. And he loved to do like weird open chords where he's like, where he's like hitting some weird shit. Like, again, like he's one of the best rhythm players that has ever existed because again, he changed the way that he thought about it. He changed the way that he played the guitar. So that's as someone who doesn't quite even understand what Bobby's doing, it's hard for me to convey that to others, you know, cause like I kind of, cause I, I, I identify more with Jerry, but I also have these Bobby type things like, You know, I'm kind of a decent meld of both of them because I have a pretty strong rhythm game and a decently strong lead game. So like I and a lot of people think that I have like that that Bobby kind of energy on like young Bobby energy on stage. And I used to hate that. But like everybody loved that shit about him. Um, What other guitarists do I draw inspiration from? Okay, so here's my list. So Jerry is like my first and foremost because of the emotion of the emotion and the ability to 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 really paint with the guitar uh to draw with it to like really like make some stuff and then i like uh trey is a huge influence uh let's see um adrian Ballou, huge influence frank zappa huge influence uh robert fripp is a huge influence um let's see uh david byrne is a huge influence. Uh, Jimi Hendrix a little bit. Like, I I used to love some Jimi Hendrix when I was younger, but I quickly, like, I I grew out of it. I grew out of it. But I still still enjoy some. But those are my guys. Uh, I also have Bobby's legs. That's right. I do have some gams. Um, Michael, thank you for being here, man. Uh, 
Let's see. You've been playing since October 2020, and in the summer 2021, your friend turned you into the de- turned you onto the dead, and it changed your playing a lot. Also, jamming with people made me a lot better. That's absolutely right, Gummo. The best way to get better is to play with people better than you. That's the absolute best way to get better. There's really no other way around it. Because, like, that's it, it calls you up to the next level. You know what I mean? Let's see here. Uh, Sam Lopez says, Yo, Davey, I have now got up on stage nine times. Congratulations, Sam. Good on you. Same place every Sunday. Fuck yeah, it has led me to my first paying gig on January 28th at a nice restaurant. I bust out something new every week. Man, that's amazing. Way to go, Sam. Uh, awesome. We're gig buddies. January 28th, I'll be playing up. Uh, St. Owsley is playing up in Knoxville at, uh, at uh, Scruffy City Music Hall. So if anybody's in Knoxville, come, come check us out. Um, he sounds like Mc- McCory Tyner during a Love Supreme. I don't know what that means. Uh, let's see. Uh, Trey and Jerry is always your favorites. Can't stop watching Billy Strings lately, though. Makes you happy to play acoustic. I mean, like, yeah, man, you got to have different influences for every, like, stage of your instrument. Because, like, my acoustic playing is probably more geared towards, like, like Jerry and Bob Dylan. Like, I love playing acoustic stuff, but it's definitely extremely folksy and a little bluegrassy. Uh, let's see. Wesley says there's a great video on YouTube titled Bob Weir Isolated Guitar that just isolates his playing along with video of his live show. Hell yeah. Um, come to Raleigh. Yeah, we're definitely so Friday before. So we have a show on Friday too, the seventh. We're playing or tomorrow. Oh shit, that's tomorrow. Hey, uh, we're playing at a place called Hi Fi Clyde's and uh, Taylor, our drummer. And I are going to get there early and we're going to start talking about booking. So we're definitely going to try to get out to North Carolina. We want to do North Carolina. We're playing in Asheville February 13th at the one stop. So add that to your calendars as well. Um, Let's see. Oh, Bobby sounds like McCory Tyner. Okay. Yes. Bust out of Golden Road. Oh yeah, that's a that's a great fucking song. Um, Brian Trevor says, "Hey man, love your channel, love the Play Dead series. Really taught me a lot about Grateful Dead guitar. Great, that's what we're here for. That's what I want. I just want people playing the music, um, and that's why I try to keep the 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 lessons as simple as possible, because like not everybody. I mean, like first of all." A lot of people already know chords and just want like an, an overview of the song. You know, it's just like, show me the way the chords go. I've got it. Don't don't show me anything else. I've got it. And then you've also got the beginners that are like, I cannot handle any of the complex stuff. So it's like, it's good for everybody. Like the, you know, the, the further along players can just quickly grab what they're after. And then like the, the newer players can actually really get the idea of the tune. Um, which, you know, I just, I just try to make the lessons that I wish I had when I was starting out. That's, that's what I'm trying to do. And that's nothing, that's nothing bad about the other guys that teach the lessons and stuff. Um, that's that like, it's nothing on stitch method. That's nothing on weeping willow. That's nothing on uh, Jeff. That's nothing on Gabriel. Like all of these guys are amazing and they, they're amazing at what they do, but like, they're all school taught. They're, they're all trying to teach you theory. They're all trying to teach you exactly what's going on or exactly what they did. And not everybody needs that. Not everybody learns that way. And so, like, I'm, I'm the guy who's just your buddy trying to teach you. I'm just showing you how to play a song. I'm not teaching you how to play guitar. I'm showing you how to play a dead song. Um, and and I, really, I really like that aspect of it because I'm not a teacher. Like, a lot of people are like, yes, you are. But, like, no, I'm not. I'm just, your, I'm just a dude. I'm just a I'm just a guy who's trying to to do what I like to do as a form of income because I'm mentally ill and I literally cannot get a nine to five job. Uh, so I'm trying to make this work because this stuff I have a natural aptitude for. It's like entertaining. 
I can do that. I can entertain the fuck out of some people, but I, I do not like doing construction. I cannot do that properly. Um, let's see. Very new to the... Oliver says, very new to the dead and the channel. Absolutely loving everything I've seen. Great, man. Thank you so much. Rob says, yeah, my problem with a lot of the songs is not actually playing them, but remembering the chords. Yeah. So always, so when, when these lessons come out on Thursdays, uh, have a notepad. Have a notepad, and as we're going through the song, write down your chords. Right, write them down, because, like, here, let me see. Let's see if I can show you just an example. So here's an example of my notes. These are my notes. So here, let me, let me zoom in a little bit. So these are my notes for St. Stephen. Do you see how I've got it laid out here? I've got, I've got my tabs. So I can read them because I've got them on like a music stand in front of the camera. So, but but you've also see that I've got I've got the verses written just like that. I've got the chords written out, and then you've got the lick there, and then it just continues on that same way, right? So this is like, and so once you write these down, you fucking have them, right? So use your brain, kids. Use your brain. It's okay to take notes. Doesn't make you a nerd. You fucking nerd. Um. Let's see. Sam Lopez says, hypothetical. What if I make the Memphis, Nashville, Asheville, or Chattanooga Bobby show? Do you need a podcast guest? St. Owsley playing close by in March. Um, we will be playing. Uh, so I live in Chattanooga. Um, and we we play out of Chattanooga. Uh, we, we do already have a show set up, an after party for the Bobby and the Wolf Brothers. We're already playing the Chattanooga after party for that at JJ's Bohemia. So that's March 25th, I think, 25th, 28th, I don't remember. Um and then uh I mean Sam, if you want to come and sit in on a po like if you're around, man, come say hi and like if we if we vibe, man, yeah, come be on the podcast. I don't give a fuck. Um Wally asks, "Do I play by ear?" Most of the time. Most of the time, yeah, I can I can pick it out. Uh otherwise, if I'm like sitting in with anybody or they're about to play a tune that I don't know, I'm just like, what's the key? And if you can tell me the key, I'm good. Or if you can tell me the the first couple chords, I'm good. Um, yeah, always use your brains. You got to use them brains, kids. <clears throat> they were given to you for a reason. You gots to use them. All right. Margo says, play, 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 play. Also, it's not a competition. It's about fun. Right. Absolutely. So when it, so what is the old saying? Comparison is the thief of joy. You shouldn't compare yourself to anyone. I mean, naturally, you're going to do it. Naturally, you're going to try to start comparing yourself to people because that's what, like, that's what social media has taught you to do. That's what TV taught you when we were kids. Like, it's what maybe your parents have taught you, grandparents, whatever. But that's something that you have to break yourself of as you become older and, like, become more of a conscious adult or cognizant of yourself on the planet. Uh, because no, you're, no one else can take your spot. Your spot is always there. No matter what you're doing or where you're at in the middle of whatever, your spot, the U-shaped spot, is always there. Nobody can take that spot. See, literally nobody can do what I can do. Like, and, I, and I've talked about that before. It's like the, there's nobody that's going to be able to do what I do better than me. Nobody. There are people out there that can do what I do, kind of, but it's never going to be what I do, and it's never going to be as good I can do it. Uh, can I play with my teeth? Yeah. Not gonna, though. I don't have to show you that. That's very intimate. Um, 
Gummo says, how can I learn new ways to play chords because I need to improve on my rhythm game? Um, fret with my teeth. I fret with my tongue. Uh, it, yeah, inversions are the thing. So Gummo, so you just need to figure out. So this is what I like to teach people. So you have you have chord inversions, and then you have the whole, whole half method. So you've got an E. You've got an E right there. You've also got an E right there. You've got an E right there. You've got an E right there. You've got an E right there. Something's going on here. Something going on with my tuner. There's so there's there's versions, there's different versions of each chord up and down the neck in different fingering patterns. So you've got this version, which is also technically this version, right? And then you've got these shaped chords, which is basically this shape, right? So you've got an A. Got an A, got an A, got an A, got an A. And so once you learn that and get that beaten into your brain, everything opens up. And that also allows you to implement the whole whole half method properly. Because if you're doing a... So if you're doing E... That's just using a whole, whole, half method. So whole, whole, half. So whole step, whole step, half step. So I'm literally just using the whole, whole half method to get the sounds that I have and throwing chromaticisms in there. Um, and then Oliver asks, how uh, any tips on using chromaticisms while imp improvising? So using that same kind of thing. It's about staying within that key. So, like, as long as you start within the key and end within the key, you're going to be fine. It doesn't matter what notes you put in between. It's about where you start and where you finish. Um... So when you're using the chromaticisms, you're really just using the in-between notes that lead you up, right? So instead of using, you would, see what I did? So it's, it's just about working in those in-between notes the best you can uh, and, and staying in key. So it's like you start in key and end in key and the stuff in the middle doesn't really matter as long as you start and finish. <laughs> um... Randomly wanted to learn China Cat today. Found your lesson. Really glad to have stumbled on your channel. John K., thanks, man. Thanks for being here. Uh, there's a ton of lessons. I think there's like almost, I think there's almost 80 play deads now. Something like that. We're in the 70s, I think. Um, can I do soloing lessons for songs? A uh, simple loop like Franklin Fire on the Mountain, Dark Star, et cetera. What do you mean by a soloing lesson? Like I teach you, I don't teach specific solos. I don't do that. And these live, the, the, there are quite a few live solo workshops where I go over ideas about how to solo over things, but I don't, I don't teach specific solos because I wouldn't do that to you. I don't want to put something in your brain 
that then you're going to have to fight against later. Um, because the whole point, the whole point to me is figuring out your own style and the right things to do. So now I'm not saying don't learn a Jerry like solo note for note, because that could help you learn some things that can help you with some ideas on stuff. But that's also part of the reason why I don't do it is because first of all, uh, so, so I do the ideas and tips and stuff. So like, if you go onto the channel and look at the other live solo workshops, that's, that's what those are. I go over the ideas of chromaticisms. I do the whole, whole half method kind of idea, all that jazz. I do, I do a lot of that in the last, last year's live solo workshops. Um, and then, um, let's see. Slipknot tips. Hard to get your pinky working for it. Practice. Pinky. You got to get that pinky in there. Guys, if you're not using your pinky... You're not giving yourself enough credit. You're not doing it right. Come on now, get that pinky in there. I would say like one of the best ways to start using your pinky is to start barring with it. And so like with, with help on the way and Slipknot, when you're doing stuff like that, um, like you're gonna be like leading with that pinky. It's early. It's early for me. <laughs> Let's try that again. Those backwards arpeggios aren't a joke when you're first waking up. I need more coffee. Um, but yeah, I would say, again, man, it's just all about like continuing continuing to to practice that so like when you're when you're doing the help on the way slip not slow it down slow it the fuck down once you can play something slow you can start to speed it up incrementally and i know that that's hard to do especially with those diminished runs that they're that they make you do but it's it's really the only way to do it when i learned that song it was like note by note fucking painstaking it because it takes a it's a hard song man it takes a minute it takes a minute to learn anything anything worth having is worth working for um Yeah, it kicks my ass too, bro. <laughs> um, oh, you're going to ride the Trans-American Trail? Let's see. Um, what reverb setting do I have right now? Okay, so this is... I use a Ventress. Russell, we love you, bro. I hope, I mean, like, I hope your trike gets together and you can make your, make your trip, bro. Um... And and yeah, man, if you're if you're over around this way, come and come and say hi. So B patch. Uh so on my Ventress, the Aria Cardinal is great. That's a great guitar. Um, and it's and it's very close to a uh like an Ibanez musician uh that that like Bobby and Jerry played back in the 70s. But so back to the reverb. I've got it on hall, because I like a hall reverb. Because I know that Jerry used the spring reverb, but there was a lot of times that they were in a big place, and you just get that sound. And I love... I just love the way that sounds. I just love the way that hall sounds. And then also, if I'm feeling, if I'm feeling frisky, I'll throw on the Milkman's spring, just so that's also in there. And it's it's not on the biggest hall. Like I can make that hall bigger. <laughs> That's what's awesome about the Ventress. 
See how big that hall is now? And then I can up the time, and I can up the mix of it, so... And then what's really cool, oh, that's really nice. Uh, uh, what's really cool is that on this Ventress, you can you can hold down this other the other button, which is also a tap tempo for your uh, your reverb and stuff. You can actually change the way it comes in with the music. Um, you can hold it down for like a freeze. You can hold it down for like a sustain. So you can do. And then you can kind of lead over that. Um, it really helps in jams sometimes. And then let's see, put my shit back where it was. All right. So yeah, let's show you a, so the Aria Cardinal, it's a, oh my God. So this is what they look like, and this is what mine looks like. That's like basically the exact one that I have. It's this guy. Is this this see through blue? Um, and you, they also came in red. They came in like this see through the just like the natural kind of like oaky finish. They came in black. There's there's a there's a few different kinds, uh, but they're really solid. They come with splits. Which was which was cool for back in the day. That was when that first started happening. Um, and then there you have the splits. Oh, Cobain played one. Isn't that fun? That's crazy. I had the same birthday as Kurt Cobain, so it's weird that we both played the same kind of guitar. That's cool though. Um, but it's a beautiful guitar. It's a great guitar. I I really I really like them for their price point. I was able to get mine for like hundred and eighty bucks, and I don't think they're that cheap anymore. <laughs> I think they're pretty expensive now, uh, but you can also go with because again these are just like so. What is this one? This one went for three fifteen. You've got one. Uh, you've got a Cardinal series here for four hundred. Um, uh, you got a blue one for three. <laughs> poor condition. I don't look that bad. Well, you don't know what the neck looks like. Um, but yeah, there's there's a few choices, but then you could also do um, so. Ibanez now they have this kind of uh, uh, let's see. Took a shoot of the face during lithium. Let's see. Um, uh, let me I forget what that guitar is. That happens. Where is it at? It's like one of the newer base models. It's kind of got that same vibe to it. Ugh, why do you make me look through shit like this? Oh, the the AX. So this is basically this is basically what, you know, that what that has kind of turned into. Now, these are cheap and they're solid. These are cheap and solid, and it's got that same kind of idea. Uh you don't have the coil taps, you don't have the the splits there, but you can also get those installed. 
Uh, but these these are like two hundred dollar guitars. They're not that they're not that expensive. They're pretty solid. Uh, they also do so. That's the AX. Uh, they also do an AR, which is more along the. This is basically like what Bobby had. That's basically what that is. Not really my kind of thing. You've got these. You've got these other kind of styles. The artist series. Um, but as far as like, you know, bang for your buck goes. If you're if you if your budget is really low. Now I don't know what your budget looks like. Um, let's see. Don't want to lose any. Don't want to miss any questions. So, uh, Oscar says, "Hey, Davey, I don't know if you'll see this. I did, but the content and lessons you have provided for the Deadhead and musician community is astounding. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. That means a lot." Um, Zach Cass. Happy New Year to you, too. Amon, what's up? Uh, this dude on a, the Dead Musicians Forum said you can't get a Jerry Tone from a PRS. What do I think? I think you can get a Jerry Tone out of almost anything. Now, that middle pickup does a lot. However, you can add a middle pickup to any guitar. You can route it out if you're feeling froggy, or you can just like split your pickups and run them both together, and that'll get you close. Um, but a lot of it has to do with also how you're going to dial in your amp uh, and how you play. It's all in the fingers. So that person really didn't know what they were talking about. A guitar is a guitar, you know, but really that middle pickup makes all the difference. That's where that sound really is. <laughs> Well, I mean, John Mayer's been like, like exclusively playing PRSs for the dead stuff. I'm not a fan of it. I don't like that his signature PRS is just a strat knockoff. It's weird. It's a weird thing to do. It's a weird thing to make a big company do to fight another. But it's strange. It's a strange thing. I'd never do it. Why not make your own guitar? Why not like design your own? I don't know. It's weird. But I have nothing to say about it. You know, Salami, he's a great player, and people really like what he does. And so, whatever. You know, do, do what you do. I mean, he gets all those guitars for free, so it doesn't really matter. Um, you can get custom. There you go, Rob. Rob knows what's up. Um, let's see. Thor sound, act standard, aria cardinal. I like the idea of a smooth playability budget. Your budget's not too low. Okay, so um, <clears throat> the Thor sound is a little different. The Thor sound, they're going to give you, I think they have the three pickups, or they have something like that. Um, he played Wolf. Yeah, he did. That's that's cool. Um, what, are, what are splits? So splits allow you to split your pickups. So you're basically going from like full humbucker like uh les paul sound right and then you can split that to where it's a single coil that's what this does so that's split not split I don't mean to just keep having that up. <laughs> not trying to just do like an Ibanez fucking sponsor thing right now. Um, let's see. Strat wouldn't get okay. So uh, modified your Les Paul Koa, your BC Rich Mockingbird, both routed out with a middle Super Two and Waldo Buffer. That's the way to do it. Yeah, uh, amazing Jerry Tone, but higher price point. Well, I mean, again, like if you want, again, Waldo makes the best buffers. He makes the best buffers on the market. He literally makes them to spec because that's his life's journey is to make shit exactly how Jerry had it. Uh, the Super 2s are actually pretty pretty cheap as far as like pickups go. Like these three pickups, these are all Super 2s. These are all DiMaggio Super 2s. Cost me 200 bucks for all three of them. The, the cream ones and the black ones are like 60 bucks a piece or 70 bucks, something like that. Um, so it's really not that bad. And if you can route it out yourself and wire it yourself, it gets even cheaper. Um, soldering isn't that hard. Uh, let's see. 
So yeah, Waldotronics, and I and I always put that in the link, or I usually put it in the description. Maybe I haven't put it not in these, but in the other Play Dead videos. The Waldotronics thing is always in there. Um, brass nut, brass nuts, the way to go. Yep. Let's see. Um, hold on, I'm trying to trying to catch up. There's a lot of uh, the D'Angelico Brighton looks good. Yeah. Um, so he likes the he would like the strat style, but they wouldn't give him the custom things he wanted. Well, I mean, yeah, but then why are you then going to be like, I guess I'll go over to this other company that'll give me exactly what I want, but I'm going to take your body style. Like you'd think that like you would, I mean, come on, you've played, you've been sponsored by Fender and played Fenders for so long that you're going to do some shit like that. That's weird, man. I would never do anything like that, no matter the circumstance. I wouldn't, like, steal a body style. Even though, like, there's so many copies out there of everybody does their own kind of strat style and stuff like that. But it's like, you look at... Look at the wolf. The wolf is a strat. Straight up. The wolf is a strat. It's a stratocaster, but it's different. It's different. See what I'm saying? The, the wolf may still be a strat, but it's, it's, it's different. It's different enough, you know? So do some shit like that. You know, tweak it. Um, let's see. Can you belt that? The ooh, the harder they come, the harder they fall. <laughs> what an awful voice. The strat has to be ash or it doesn't work. Uh, middle pickup, blaster, buffer, and DeMarzio super for tiger or David Allen voodoos for wolf. Huh. You know, my name's David Allen. <laughs> my name is, my first and middle name is David Allen. Um, it's very common. A brass nut. So this is your nut. Get a brass one. Actual brass. Musical brass. Not like one of the ones where it's just like a block. But yeah, actual musical brass. And then as far as like saddles, these are your saddles. And the, these can just, I mean, brass is great. Like, but, you know, the nut is, I think, the most important. Uh... Guitar players are conservative. They don't like major change. Uh, like Sir just takes body styles. Yeah, man, I'm not a fan of that. Like my body style is different. It's got a, it's got some some inspiration from all over the place. You know what I mean? Makes something different. Maybe not attractive to everybody, but hey, not everybody's gonna play one. Um, let's see. Jerry also used a strat and wanted to change things, and he got wolf. Absolutely. That's exactly what it was. Your wolf is on the way, Justin. Congrats. Uh, you can swap the nut and saddles to brass, and it changes the tone a ton. Absolutely it does. It gives it adds natural harmonics to it because it's vibrating through the metal and not plastic or bone, you know? Um, let's see. Metal nuts and zero fret are the way to go. I mean, a zero fret. I thought about putting a zero fret on here, but I didn't. I probably should have. Uh, just finished your Gator build. That's a great. It's a great. They used to call that the Frankenstein. Um, not metal nut, brass. You don't want to just go metal because I'm, but brass, brass nut. Um, did I like the fret inlays? On the, on the wolf, yeah. I mean, like there's, it's they're not like, they're not like actual inlays. Like they're they're inlaid in the guitar, but they're not actual. They're set down a little farther, and they're like built up with something. So I'm not not quite sure exactly how they did it. Um, my nuts are brass. <laughs> um. So Steven asks, uh, do I have any vintage amps uh, and what auto water do I use? Okay, so I have a, uh, a Mesa dual rectifier, a Mesa Blue Angel dual rectifier. That's about as vintage as I've got, uh, and that's probably from like the 90s. And then I've got, a, uh, I've got a Mesa Nomad 55, which is a great amp, uh, and that's probably from like the early 2000s. And then I've got my Milkman, which is pretty much brand new, and it does everything I need it to do, and it sounds fucking amazing. Um, 
And uh, for the Ottawa, I have I have a Mutron Microtron Four. That's what I use uh, because I found it. Um, I found it for 180 bucks on uh, Guitar Center used from like Ohio or some shit, and I bought it like immediately. I was like, you don't find them that cheap. Um, could you do a jam and he's gone tonight? We're doing a live chilling jam. This is this is a live workshop Q and A. So if you guys have questions. Q, Q, and that's the Q part, and the A part is me answering them. And if there's anything like, if there's anything like tonally you want to know or anything like that, I can like, I can example. But tonight, uh, nine nine p.m., we're gonna do a live chilling jam. So yeah, we can do a we can do a he's gone then. Um, did I do the inlays on this guitar? No, these are fucking stickers because people were bitching. People were bitching that they couldn't tell where I was. So I got the fucking stickers. I didn't want to fuck up this fretboard. This is beautiful. Uh, so this fretboard is beautiful, artistic ebony. So like you can't really, you can't see it too well. Uh, but there's like, so it's darker on this side, but then there's like this beautiful kind of like caramel, kind of like lighter brown running through it. And I didn't want to fuck it up because this was my first build and, I, and I'm not a luthier. I had to learn all of this, again, trial by fire. Uh, all of this stuff was a happy accident. Uh, that it worked out well at all and playable. Had no idea that was going to happen. Um, and uh, so these are stickers, and they, they're they not great. They're These are the only ones that have stuck around. Everything else has, like, fallen off or come off because, first of all, my finger oil and then the oil that I oil my fretboard with and stuff, it's just really hard on them. Um, let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my way down. I should be on a plane to Mexico. The band needs me. They don't need me. There's so many, like, there's so many people uh, higher on that list before me that they will never call me up. Unless everyone, unless it's like one of those things. It's like a King Ralph situation. You know what I mean? Like, every single not Jerry has to be, like, on a plane that goes down before they'll ever call me. <laughs> um... Matt Wayne Henderson, the day you bought your first guitar, he used to work at Martin and Bill. Ooh, wow. That's awesome, Carter. Uh, do I use the boost on the Milkman? Sometimes it's a really good boost. Uh, sometimes I do use it because it's a really nice just fucking um, FET drive. It's really nice and clean. Um, let's see. Really just play as many guitars as you can. You don't have a better chance finding something that suits your hands and style. Absolutely. Like, it just takes time, but also... You never know. Like when I first got when I first got Beatrix, the wolf, when I first got her, I didn't like it because the neck was fat. But then it's like I will never play a skinny necked guitar again because of the wolf. Because like I got these huge hands. Look at these hands. Look at these big old hands. Look at these guys. I need a big fat neck to do that with. And so I modeled the neck of Birdie after Beatrix. Um Let's see. JBL says, once you mentioned how you visualized the fretboard, it was a great description that I hadn't heard from anyone else, but I can't remember what it was. Something like whole step, whole step. So it's whole step, whole step, half step. So it's whole, whole, half. It's the whole, whole, half method with inversions. So if you know your chord inversions, you know those chord inversions, you can go whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, and you're always in key. So I'm literally just playing whole step, whole step, half step with uh, chromatics in between to like make it sound more technical than it really is. Um, let's see. The Fender Red Knob Twin is a good way to get 72 Jerry sound for cheap still. There you go. There you go, Terrapin Wolf. Drop in some facts. Um, once you have your fingers toned solid, then it's all about what's in the guts uh, of the guitar as to the timbre of what comes out of it. Absolutely. Where do you even start with building your own guitar? Wood. <laughs> you get wood. Wood and start s s gluing it together. Watch videos. Watch guitar build videos of the kind of guitar that you want to build. And then from there, see if it's still something you want to do. Because it takes a long time. It takes a long time. It's a lot of sanding. A lot of hand sanding. Um, whole whole half is the major scale, but it's also... It's also not. You can do the same thing with minor. It's 
It's all about perspective, cinnamon. Um, and then, yeah, I did hate that neck. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Does the milkman break up and get distorted at higher volumes or remain clean with headroom? It's got a ton of headroom. Now, if I were to if I were to blast it through, like, cause it, I'm running it. I'm running it direct in. Um, I'm running it direct in, so like I can here. Now that's rough, but it's still coming through really clean. Like it, it doesn't really break up unless I make it, um, which which you can. And there's there's a ton of headroom on this amp. Like the you know this little thing is a hundred watts, and it's uh. It's like it's got the tube preamp over here. It's got a 12AX7, and that leads into a Class D amplifier, which then just like throws that shit out there. Um, and then, like, you know, if I were to throw on, like, that's nice and clean, you throw, throw on the old distortion, the DS1. It takes all of them really well. And then you've got like my green screamer. You know, it, it takes all the pedals really well. Um, because it itself is a pedal, you know, <laughs> like this is a floor pedal basically of an amp. It's, it's really strange the way they do it. Uh, yeah. YouTube is your friend. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's a Western device to keep the colonists in fear. Uh, do I like strats? Not really. I'm not a huge strat fan. I'll play one, but like they're not my favorite. Um, it would have to have a bunch of humbuckers on it. I just don't. I mean, I played one for a while. It was like a 90s grunge version of a strat. It had two humbuckers in it. Uh, and that was okay. I'm just not a huge fan of like, I was never a huge fan of like the style. I think it was because when I was growing up, like you'd only really see Eric Clapton playing one. And I'm not a big Eric Clapton fan because, you know, he let his kid die. Uh, I'm not a big fan of ne gross negligence from being high passed out on a couch. That might be a hot take. Maybe you guys are fine with letting your kids fall out windows. I don't know. That's on you. <laughs> Pretty weird stance to take if you're, if you're about that, though. Um, but no, I don't have anything against them. I know a lot of people that play them. I know a lot of people that swear by them, but it was just never one of those things. That, I like weird shit, man. Obviously look at me, look at me. Do I look like a strat player? <laughs> um, nice calves, Bob bike. She's probably, well, yes, the major scale is the foundation of Western music. And with a different tonal center, a major scale could be seen as minor, but that's it's getting into mode. Well, yeah. That's like the whole idea, though, is like it's all about perspective, which makes it a mode. You change mode. Yeah. Yep. Um, let's see. I thought Jerry sounded fine playing the Black Lives Paul. Don't know why he changed. I mean, probably because they're fucking heavy. Probably wanted some, a little something a little lighter. <laughs> Those Les Pauls, man, especially back in the day, it's just a big chunk of fucking wood. Um but also gave you that sustain. Uh, please, could you give some help with settings for sugary Althea Brown and women like beat style and tempo? I have a pen and paper in hand. Peace. Uh, what do you? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean, Sam? I can't just like give you a tempo. What do you mean? <laughs> you talking about like beat style? Well, sugary is in six, so it's like a waltz. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 It's just like a solid waltz. Um, let's see. So Les Paul had all his stuff installed. It was probably just too much work. Jerry could have been bass player the way he's on boards. And SG, I'm still not not actually a fan of SGs either. Like, I'm not a fan of Les Pauls. I'm not a fan of SGs. I'm not a fan of, like, the, just, like, these ubiquitous guitars, like, that everybody has to play or has. Um, let's see. 
Let's see. SG Neck Dive. Uh, do I do private lessons? Absolutely. Uh, you can email us at this email address, tobyanddavy at gmail.com. And yeah, I absolutely, absolutely, I do one on one private lessons. Um, your bass master is a 1963 head and cab, 1963 band master head and cab in cream color. Nice. Uh, you have a keyboard that makes beats. Okay. Well, it's hard. It's hard for me to tell you. Like at that point, though, you, you uh, go go listen to um, the, the 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 Jeff Williams backing tracks for all these songs, and then you can get your tempo from him because uh, he actually put the time in to do that. I don't. I, don't know. Uh, I just play. I just play guitar, bro. Um, Chicory always sounds like every campfire ever. <laughs> People should not fear theory. Fear theory. Now that's a that's a TV show right there. Fear theory. It is not essential, but it can help. It's like having maps when you go on a hike. You can get there without a map, but it's easier with a map. Absolutely, that's a good it's a good way to look at it, Cinnamon. Um, let's see. The PRS Silver Sky is pretty dope. I mean, I'm not. A, I just like. I don't. I don't like it. Uh, all double cuts suffer from neck dive unless compensated. Thoughts on Hendrix? Uh, let's let's pause for Harry. Shit. Uh, it's garbage. Uh, Let's see here. Thoughts on Hendrix? I mean, I loved Hendrix when I was like, re- like first starting to smoke weed and get into psychedelics. Like um, the way he played again, he's all style, and I love that. And of course, it's an influence on me. Um, but as far as something I will go out of my way to listen to, I mean, I'll probably just listen to like Axis Bold as Love and call it a day. Like that's probably like that's that's like my favorite album he ever made. Um, and that's probably where I would draw the line at, at Hendrix because like, again, to me, unfortunately I kind of loop Hendrix in with like pink. What the fuck was that? What'd you do? What'd you do? Come here. I kind of loop Hendrix in with like pink Floyd and sublime as like middle school rolling around smoking blunts of mids, you know, that's, that's kind of how I put it, which isn't fair. That's not fair to Jimmy or to any of those bands, but like that's that's where I kind of left them, which is co- probably kind of fucked up. <laughs> um, good to see you, Rohan. Tom Hamilton to play lead uh, this weekend for D- Dead and Company in Mexico. You may have to stream that. Still a hard pass on Dead and Company. Um, I mean, like if they called me, I would go. If they asked me to play and sing, of course I would do it. Um, but uh, it's not one of those things that I'm gonna like hang my hat on or like shit talk mayor about, like or or anything. Like I'm stoked that Tommy Tommy's gonna play it. Um, I also kind of heard that they were eyeing Zach Nugent, who was playing with um, uh, who, who played with Melvin Seals. Um, and uh, I don't think that he. I, I thought like he made it seem like he was gonna get the call, but I don't think he did. Um, but, like, I would play if they asked me to. Uh, let's see. Dude, Electric Lady waits for you and me. Total DMT song. Absolutely. Um, you can't. Dave says he can't ever escape playing Telecasters. If you want something different, just buy a, a different T-shaped thing. <laughs> That's fun. Um, let's see here. Guys, if you haven't yet, please hit the like button. That helps us out a lot. Um, if you haven't yet, uh, leave a question. I'm probably going to wrap up here soon because we've been going for about an hour 15. Um, what about J.J. Kale? You listen to him? Yeah, I love I love J.J. Kale. Um, have I heard about the Jerry biopic? Uh, you talking about the documentary? Because the other thing is just Grateful Dead. It's a Grateful Dead movie. Um, it's a Grateful Dead biopic, but, uh, I know that they're doing a Jerry documentary. Uh, do I dig square pusher? Sure. Uh, Rusty, you didn't, there's still, we still got a few minutes, bro. Do you want to ask a question or anything? Um, Jonah Hill is going to be Jerry. Yeah, I know. I know. With like, uh, 
a few podcasts ago, we casted the Grateful Dead movie. As soon as that news hit, we did a podcast about it. Um, and uh, we we casted some really cool people. Uh, Slayer riffs. <laughs> Cinnamon. You little rascal. Um, but yeah, like I, I hope, I hope Jonah does a good job. I hope he actually puts the time into like learning some mannerisms and like learns how to tuck his finger back. Uh, I wonder who they're going to get to play his double notorious. Thank you. Thank you for the, the dollar. Uh, what's the title of that podcast? I have to watch it. It's called, um, it's called casting the grateful dead movie. Uh, and it's like the cover of it is Toby and I's faces pasted on Jerry bodies. Chet Hanks is Jerry. <laughs> Grateful Dead was a game changer. At one time, I thought Beatles, Hendrix, Marley were top three greatest, but then 17, uh, first dead show. Now you can play 30 dead songs almost. Oh man, that's awesome. Uh, the best Jerry biography book, uh, uh, the best Grateful Dead book that I've ever read is Steve Parrish's Home Before Daylight because it's it's the experience of someone around them. It's like the the witnessing of like the whole thing. And I really, I love that book. To this day, Big Steve's book, Home Before Daylight, is one of the best books I've ever fucking read. Just like, he's so honest. He's so fucking honest about everything. He doesn't hide anything. He's straight up that he was a shitty person and did shitty things and like... It, it's amazing. It's a it's a beautiful read. It's sad. It's heart wrenching, um, and that's it's got some of the best road stories in it. It's so good. The best dead movie is Electric Apricot. Yeah. Uh, have I read Phil's book? I don't think I've read Phil's book. What is that one called? I've read Deal. Oh, Searching for the Sound. Yeah, I'll have to give that one. I'm I'm pretty sure I read that a few years ago, but I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to check that out. But again, Home Before Daylight is the book. It's the book. And I just, I just love that the, like the, the the cover of the book is uh, Jerry on his guitar, like passing something over to the back of the book, and on the back of the book, it's Steve Parrish taking a joint from him. It's great. Um, yeah, so I would say I would say go go read uh, Home Before Daylight. Um, over, honestly, over any of them, because if you've got the band members only going to say certain things, you know what I mean. The band member has certain recollections of things because they were in it. Now, if it's Big Steve, he's on the outside of it. He's looking in. You know, so you get to actually witness things from a different perspective other than like what you decide it is. Um, let's see. D dude, the, the pimp and then the fucking Hell's Angels hold him out the window until he apologizes. That's one of my favorite fucking stories. Uh, I also love, um, ah, oh, fuck. What was it where he's, uh, where he talks about, uh, Bob Dylan and Jerry cutting up a piece of the rug that they had spilt Coke on and like doing, doing the Coke out of the square of rug in the studio when they could have just gotten more cocaine. It's crazy. Um, yeah, Pete Townsend's great. Uh, oh my God. Smoking chicken shit. Did I learn waiting for a miracle? I I've I've played it a little bit, but I haven't like committed it to memory. But I will, Rusty. Uh, talked about some pretty rad stuff. Let's see. Oh, that was Lowell George, the Coke record. Okay, my bad, my bad. Little feet. Yeah, that's right. But I'm pretty was was Bob was Bob Dylan not there too? Because I feel like what is the no? There was a no no. Bob Dylan must have been there too. Is that not is that not right? Everybody's done rug drugs. Absolutely. Would I do a lesson on Tiger Rose? I mean, probably. We're gonna do a lesson on everything after a certain point. Um, 
But guys, I think I'm going to call it here. Uh, I got uh, I got some other stuff to do. Ever thought about touring with one of the dead groups? That's what, that's what we're working on right now. So St. Owsley is going to be the group of this channel, right? So St. Owsley is my project. It's my group. I'm the dad of that band. And like that's going to be the band that comes and sees you guys. That's going to be the big touring band is St. Owsley. That's going to be the one. And it's like it's Jerry Band for the most part. But with the name St. Owsley, we can literally do whatever. So, like, I'm sure that we'll work in some dead tunes here here and again, but, like, the Jerry Band, like, move to it is a little bit easier to book because not everybody does. Everybody's got a Grateful Dead tribute, but not everybody has a Jerry Band tribute. Now, if you have a Jerry Band tribute that sneaks in some dead songs, all, all the better for it. Um, but but St. Owsley is the, the one uh, that we're going to do. Ever coming to Scotland... What do you mean? I would love to come to Scotland. We've got like, as far as I know, we've got two subscribers in Scotland and that is enough for me to go. You know what I mean? Um, so no, we'll definitely do like an overseas tour. Cause I really want to do a thing. I want to do kind of like a Toby and Davey variety show where we tour around like Toby comes with us and we do, we open up the nights with a podcast. I would love to like open up the nights with like an hour and a half podcast and then finish out the night with like with grateful dead stuff. That's what I want to do. Um, that, that would be like the big, that's like the big move, maybe even next year is to like do the, the Toby and Davey variety show, uh, where we travel around the country and the world podcast and then music. That's what I want to do. Um, but I love you guys so much. Uh, the final Terrapin lesson comes out next week. Again, it's already filmed. I'm sorry. I just wasn't able to edit it this week. Got a lot going on. Got a show tomorrow. And then, you know, of course, like I've got a live stream tonight, live stream tonight at nine show tomorrow that will also be streamed. And then Saturday podcast, Sunday, another shorter live stream to kind of make up because, again, those live streams are how I make my money. Uh, and like when we have a show on a Friday, it's like I make more money doing the live streams than I do at a show, <laughs> which is crazy, but it's the truth. Um, and uh, I love you guys so much. And uh, we'll see you soon, okay? Vaudevillian acts. Well, Toby and I, Toby and I juggle. Toby and I can do some juggling. All right, I love y'all. I got to go get some posters printed for Knoxville and get those sent off. And uh, I love you so much. And I'll see you tonight. So nine o'clock tonight, we're gonna be we're gonna be right back here jamming and chilling, okay? So I love you. And um, hopefully this was good. <laughs>